Hi everyone, I'm Cameron McIntosh and this is Lippy. Uh, I'm the author of the Max Booth Future Sleuth series and I'm going to take you on a little trip into the 25th century by reading the first chapter of the latest title, Chip Lip. Here we go, hope you enjoy. Chapter 1, A Ricey Device. Wow, I say, munching into a mouthful of Risberry Risotto. I had no idea you were such a good cook, Jessie. Jesse grins. Well, it's not quite as good as your boodle berry noodle cake, but I did my best. It's a mega treat to be sitting in Jesse's workshop, having a home-cooked meal again. It doesn't happen very often. Most mealtimes I eat packets of dried zing beans and self-cooking curries in the old packing case I live in with my faithful beagle bot, Oscar. They're all I can normally afford. Tonight, though, my best pal Jesse has made me a delicious dinner, packed full of real risberries unlike the rehydrated ones I've been eating from packets for the last two years. So I asked Jessie, how was your day? Did you find any mysterious old objects for us to investigate? Funny you should ask, she says. Yes, the rice in the risotto just reminded me of something I found a few hours ago. I'd like you to have a look at it. I hope it's something edible. Sorry, Max, it's definitely not dessert. Jessie gets up and disappears into the storage room at the back of the workshop. I hear her clattering around for a minute or two, and then she jogs back to the table with a tiny metal box in her hands. I found this in a box of junk marked space travel. It must have been a mistake. There's nothing spacey about it at all. It looks a lot like something we just ate. Jessie hands me the little box and I flip its lid open. Inside, on a red cushion, is a tiny, shiny device that looks like a very well-polished grain of rice. Wow, I say, I've never seen anything like it. I roll it over with a fingernail and see that its other side seems to be made of some kind of glass. Through the glass, I can see something that looks like a tiny microchip from an old computer. Any thoughts about what it could be? asked Jessie. My guess is, hmm, a very well-preserved bunny bot dropping. Very funny, Max. I think I'd better take a closer look. Is your microscope still on? All yours, buddy. I hurry over to Jessie's desk and put the shiny grain onto her microscope plate. Angling the lens towards it, I lean over the microscope. I can now see the microchip up close. It's one of those extremely old ones with blobs of solder and actual metal inside it. From what I know about microchips, this one must be at least 300 years old. As I'm squinting into the microscope, I feel something tapping against my leg. I look down and see Oscar peering up at me with sad eyes. Sorry, Oscar, I say. Of course you can have a look too. I pick him up and he looks into the microscope with his mouth wide open. Does it look familiar, I ask him. He shakes his head vigorously. Do you think you can use a splinter net to find out what it is, I ask him. Oscar shrugs and looks up at me with his big electronic eyes. He doesn't seem very confident that the splinter net is going to be able to help us. I have a feeling it's too old for the splinter net too, I say, but why don't we find out? I put Oscar down on the floor and take the strange, ricey device out of the microscope. He angles his scanner towards it and makes a soft whirring noise. First, he prints a little plastic photo of it, and then he beams a glowing green square into the air above his back. I know what this means. He's uploading an image of the item to the splinter net. Jesse and I stare at the green square, barely able to draw breath. For about 30 seconds, we watch a pair of eyes darting from side to side in the square. That's the splinter net telling us it's searching its databases for matching images. After a few seconds, a frowning monkey face appears in the square. The splinter net seems to be telling us it doesn't recognise the item. You were right, Oscar, I say. That thing's so old, the splinter net doesn't even know what it is. Well, at least we know it was made before the year 2037, says Jessie. She's definitely right about that. 2037 was the year the old internet melted down due to a massive solar flare. That same year, the splinter net was set up, set up to replace it. The splinter net is much faster and more powerful than the internet ever was, 
if you ask it the right questions. I'm afraid I don't have time to find out what this thing is, says Jessie. So if the two of you aren't too busy, I think we've just found your next assignment. Oscar winks and salutes like a soldier. I think that's a yes from us, I laugh. Very happy to hear it. All right, Jesse, I reply, sliding the chip into my jacket pocket. It's already eight o'clock. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? We'll clean up the dinner plates. Thanks, Max, she sighs. It's been a long day. Let's talk more about this in the morning. We certainly will, I say to her. I have a feeling this little grey of glass has a lot to tell us. And that's the end of chapter one. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.